why it's so hard for the narcissist once they know you have moved on. Guys, take a quick second, like, and subscribe. In the comment down below, if you agree with this take or you don't, make sure you grab some coffee or tea. Good evening around the world. Thanks for sitting in to the Narcology Morning Show. Cheers, guys. Well, a lot of you are YouTubing in a very hasty manner. All this information, this information, this knowledge is getting into you. And it's not just knowledge, it's the truth of who you thought this person was. You're missing who you thought this person was. And you can't get this truth out of you. This is actually transcending the ignorance that we had for these empty meat suits. And regardless if you have this person back, this knowledge will not go away. This will only intensify who this person is. So you'll be sleeping with, willfully sleeping with someone who you thought you knew. And that's unnerving to say the least. But a lot of us have to go through this, have to go through seeing this in real time. And I implore you not to do this, to go to the throne because the narcissist is going to go awry with the new supply and they're going to be back up uh, your tree. And if you allow them to, they, they're addicted to human beings and it always goes south for the narcissist. So the aging narcissist runs out of these eagles' nests, if you will, to go back to. They need people to tell them who they are. And so you have to allow this knowledge to seep in. Um, that you're getting on YouTube. There's a lot of good YouTube channels out there. Allow this to seep in, but then you have to act on the truth and you have to block the narcissist because they are accompanying demons, guys. These demons want to take your life. And this is the point of having a vessel for the devil. These narcissists, these empty meat suits, they're unwillingly doing things for the devil. They, the voices that they're hearing, they think are righteous. The devil comes as an angel of light and they're going to justify all of these childish moves by the narcissist, how their affairs are justified, how they come back without apologies. Because to apologize is going against the knowledge and the narrative uh, that the narcissist has for themselves. That narrative says, you're better. You don't do anything wrong. That bully, that bully child that you're running from will never be bullied again. You're always in the right and you have carte blanche to take anything that you want out of this life. It's do as thou wills. And the devil is using these people as vessels. It's the opposite of God using us as vessels. It's that Psalms 23, uh, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Well, for the narcissist, Satan is their shepherd, and that's all they do is want, need, want, need. There's that vortex. They're never satisfied. They can have everything that their flesh desires, and they'll still be empty inside. And you see this, guys, with movie stars and billionaires. Money does not buy peace, love, and joy, happiness. Only love comes from God. And there's a lot of people who are who are indentured servants to these tares, to these uh, people who are assuming to be good. Who are trying to tell you that they're good and they're following you to church. They're on your coattails to church, but there's you're not discerning that nothing good is on their branches. There's no good fruit. It's rotten fruit. Yet they tell you to church. They they're good at. Uh, making you think that they're virtuous people, but all you have to do is discern by their fruit. And if you want to know if someone loves you, get out the biblical meaning of love from the Bible. And that will that will tell you if you're with a tear or you're with a fruitful person, wheat. There's wheats and tares, and they're going to grow together. They're going to look identical. Tares are just hollow like narcissists. That's why I call them empty meat suits. 
they act like they're bearing fruit, but if you get into them, they're empty. So if you want to know if you're with the a person who truly loves you, what does the Bible say about love? What does the Bible say? First Corinthians say about love. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious. Love is humble. Love is respectful, selfless, calm, makes no record of wrongdoings. What do narcissists do? They record. They record. They're always bringing up the past on what you did what wrong. Are they exhausting? Do they need you for everything? Do they need you awake constantly? Do they follow you around? Or do they provide drama to your life? Are you getting a sense of uh, this foreboding that you're running out of energy and this person, this, this energy vampire is not running out of energy because they are sucking your energy? They're drama filled. Why are they drama filled? Because they need your reaction. They need for you to tell them that they're relevant constantly and alive. And they need to be pushing your buttons constantly. They're, they're, they need human beings to talk about, to feed off of, whether it's good or bad. These are energy vampires. They can't go out by themselves without technology. Now, there's a difference between narcissists that follow you around. And, and you're thinking, I, I get my narcissist can go off in, in, to the wing of the house and I would never see him or her. Can they do that without technology? Without their cheating devices? Without computers? Can they be by themselves without a dog or a cat in their lap? Can they reflect? Can it has. Has the person that you're with ever said, you know, I was thinking about this. I was wrong in this situation. You got to discern on somebody's fruit. Narcissists are never going to say out of the blue, I was wrong on this. They can't. That's not the narrative. And it's easy, guys. It's easy to discern. If you're dating this good looking person and you're, you're already talking about marriage, in the first few weeks, there's something wrong with that. That's your flesh. And you yourself haven't even fallen in love. And that's coming. And once you fall in love, then it's then it's really game time for the narcissist. They can sense when you fall in love with them because they can't give or receive love. They know that that's the glue forever, that they own you forever. And that love, uh, if you don't compartmentalize that love and it and it rules you, and you're not ignorant anymore, and you're still getting the knowledge, if you don't learn to go to the throne and find out who you are in Christ, it's that love that's going to accept them back, guys, in the future. Two, three years down the line, you're going to find yourself alone. They know when you're lonely. The devil knows when you're lonely. The devil knows when you're going to acquiesce. And the devil's laughing because he knows you have the knowledge, Mrs. B., but you're doing nothing about the knowledge that you have for yourself. You're doing nothing about the strongholds that you have in your flesh. And God's like, come to me, I'll, I'll take them out. So you don't, you don't think you need this good looking person who validates you, who can't give or receive love. Do you understand what's going on here, God? Go get yourself fixed through your manual to you. And that's Jesus. He's your creator. Go to your creator to get fixed. He's going to say, the next time you see a good looking person who winks at you, you're not going to fall apart and go, oh my gosh, I need this. I need this person. No, you're going to say, that's interesting. What's inside this person? And then you're going to see the fruit that they have. And you're going to say, no thanks or thanks. Thanks or no thanks. You weren't able to say no thanks to a good looking person because of what you have in yourself. And the narcissist needs you to wait around. It, it's always going awry with the new supply. And they, it, if they see that you have moved on, this really hurts their game, guys. They have no one to triangulate their current fuel source with. And we know how important triangulation is for the narcissist. 
they lose their confidence. Okay. They're going to, they're going to really wear out the new supply when they have no one else waiting in the wings. This is when they, they take their current fuel source and wring them dry and just suck everything that this person has. And they're, they're hating this person that they need. This is a life for Mrs. B indentured to this empty meat suit for life. He's doing this with her. Can't you, can't you get, I, I can't get anything else out of you. I need you for me. This is a narcissist. It's, it's the curse of the narcissist. And they want you involved with their curse. They don't love you. They hate you. And they're going to hate you even worse for being with them. Because they know who they are deep down. This is what's going on, guys. With the person that you miss. You don't miss them. You miss the person that you thought that they were. But you're willing to roll in the sheets with an empty meat suit because your flesh is, is needing all this attention yourself. I have no validation. I'm codependent. I have no one to talk to. All my friends are married. All my friends seem happy. Do you know that I would say 50% of your, your group of friends, there's no love in their, there's no love in their relationships. They're just using money and distraction. And deep down, there's a lot of hatred in their marriage, but they're aging and they know that's all that they can get. And they need each other for jealousy reasons on Facebook. And, and now it becomes showing off their distractions of who they really are. And some narcissists can make it through, but it's hatred. You can see it in their eyes. You can see it in their eyes. They're both faking it. God wants to bring you love, agape love. And it's real. Only God can give you real love. But if you go to him, he's going to bring you someone who can experience that. Because empty meat suits can't. And the devil's going to use them as a vessel to come and put your light out. And there's a lot of you right now with such purpose on, on your life. And you're going to hop on a dating site and see what another narcissist thinks about you. You want to be tricked. Trick me. You know that song, um, I don't want to know the truth. Yeah, whatever, whatever. And Garth Brooks says, I would have missed the dance. Thank you for breaking my heart. Hey, at least I had the dance, right? I, I, yeah, I experienced the pain, but I, I never, I, I never would have felt like that hero for that night. Come on. God has something better for you, Garth. God has something better for you. He doesn't want heartbreak for you. He doesn't want smoke and mirrors for you. Dance boy, you would have missed the dance. I had a comment the other day. So what's the silver lining, David? You didn't tell us the silver lining. It's life everlasting. And while you're on earth, a narc free life, that's the silver lining that I'm giving you, that God's giving you, that God is trying to portray through me. And it, and it worked out perfectly for me, uh, an insubordinate, carnal christian who he went after yet one more time and i finally said all right i'll see what you have for me i'll get to know you finally what do you have for me because i have nothing else and he goes thank you for asking thank you for asking if he can do it for a grandpa like me he can do it for a grandpa like you you just have to trust him you have to have both feet in for God for this to happen to you. You can't have one foot in and one foot out with God. That's not how he operates. And he won't operate in your life. Being lukewarm, you have to be all in. And it gets so good. And no one wants that realization of agape love in their lives. So they're, they're, they don't want to get rid of their sins. So they're in and out of strip clubs and bars. In, in dance clubs, that's all false. It's all empty. And the relationships that you meet 
drunk are all false relationships. They're all empty relationships. If you were in a room with some of your buddies sober, you would have nothing to talk about. Nothing to talk about. Uh, I need a shot. I need a shot. I can't even talk without a shot. You'd have that mentality. You got, you got to usher in the demons to talk to your own bestie. And that's the relationship with narcissists. A lot of you, like I, I did, I had to be buzzed getting to know people. Relationships. My ex narc, we were always buzzed. Something happened when we were sober. We're like, uh, who are you? Who are you? And the narcissist is like, I don't even know. You'll, you'll find out who I am. And the narcissist, if you're with the narcissist right now, you'll find out if, if your gut is telling you that you're with the narcissist, you'll find out that's the Holy Ghost. If you're a believer saying you're, you're, you're starting to discern on who they really are. And this is a gift he's giving you, brother. He doesn't want you wasting any more. And I understand things have to happen to disentangle yourselves. But at least you have the knowledge. Pray for an expeditious detangling from the narcissist. Because sometimes you have to stand in the gap for people. He doesn't want us to, to, for someone to perish from our neglect. I understand that. I get that. But he doesn't want us chained to you. He doesn't. So pray. Your best weapon is God, is the power in you. Pray for covering. Pray for guidance. He, and he's saying, I would love to give you that. I'm going to make it so easy for you. Thank you. Your weapons aren't carnal. They're God. He's going to fight all your battles for you. Just keep praying. I can't do this myself. How am I going to disentangle from this person? who has their claws in all of my money and bank accounts. God's like, you did something right. You prayed to me. All things are possible through me, he says. He can make roads and wildernesses. He can make rivers and deserts, the Bible says. All things. And he's in everything. He's in everything. And you'll start to realize that. He is in everything. I love you guys. I hope this is helping. Don't go away. I got the comments of the day coming up. Don't go away. Hi, Brights. Currently in the thick of a divorce to a narc. Two kids, house, everything. Thought I was living a fairy tale for two years with how good I had it. Little did I know what was headed my way. Cheating, lies, gaslighting, manipulation, etc. The anxiety and depression are so overwhelming and I can't think straight. Worst part is I let her run our financials and our entire marriage, and I never took the time to learn how to manage money or do things like taxes. Embarrassing to admit at 37, but here I am. I've come to terms that I have codependent tendencies, and it's made the whole situation that much worse. We give the keys to uh, to the castle. We give the narcissist keys to the castle. This is how they're gonna they're gonna ransack our castles, guys. So it's good to not be controlling, but don't give the keys to the devil. Thank you for that comment. Kay writes, he popped back up last November after close to four years and acted like we ended on good terms. Parentheses, he cheated, then went ghost. He wanted to spontaneously drive to me and take me out for a drink. He just assumed that he has lifetime access to me, the audacity. I assume that he was, number one, broke and needed help. Number two, wanted to energy vamp off of me. Or number three, both. It all has to do with his circumstances, not yours. He's not back, Kate, because he misses you. He's not back because he loves you. He's back because something went awry with his connections. The harem garage. He's getting old. And he's like, Kate will do. 
Kate will do. He didn't mention the intention or no sincere, well-articulated apology was offered. No, he cheated and then ghosted you. And now he's back like nothing's happened. This is a narcissist. He's showing you his love bomb voice and his cheery attitude. This is a narcissist. Let's go out for a drink. Remember how fun I was? And this is Kate with knowledge going, oh, yeah, I do remember how fun you were. But I also remember you cheating and ghosting me like a child, like, like an evil entity. Yeah, I remember that too. Scott writes, I finally figured out I was in a relationship with a covert narcissist a couple of weeks ago. There were dozens of camouflage flags telling something is not right about this woman. Red flags aren't camouflage, but I like that line. Like having to unfriend. Yeah, we camouflage the flags. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put, uh, I'm gonna put some green over those redness of the flags because I'm, I'm having a good time here, and my flesh is digging this dopamine and this good-looking person. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint these red flags camouflage. They don't just become camouflage. We do it. We do it. Like having to unfriend some of my lady friends on Facebook or validating I love her numerous times a day. What? Do you love me? Do you love me? Say it, say it, say it again, say it again. I want you to unfriend her, her, her. All threats to me, I want you to unfriend. I don't care if you knew people before me. This happened to me, guys. And I said, I'll, I'll unfriend who you want. They're just friends, but if, if this is a deal breaker and, you know, this is right after we got married and then she dropped this, dropped the mic line on me saying, now, do you want me to unfriend anybody? And I said, no, I knew, I knew this is ominous. I said, no, I know you knew people before me, so I would never ask you to do that. And wouldn't you know, wouldn't you know, that came back to bite me and she was toying with me like a cat and a mouse. Okay, she said, and I remember this vividly. She goes, okay. And the new supply ended up being this guy on Facebook who liked every single comment, every post he was there. She knew it. But there was a giant red flag the size of a garrison one, and that was her rage. It was like reasoning with a young child and I never had kids. So I would just leave and get the you're abandoning me. A real man would, would stay and protect this monster. I mean, this, this, this beautiful gal that needs protection. No, you needed protection from her. And God was showing you these red flags for that protection. Don't fall into the damsel of distress, guys, that we, we do with these good looking women who treat us like garbage. And then when we try to leave, it's, it's, oh, you're not a man. You need to stay here and take this abuse because that's what real men do. <laughs> Don't knock me down when I'm preaching good. So I would just leave and get the, you're abandoning me. Then the throwing of objects, nothing more solid than a tennis ball. I walked out, but her character take these socks to the face. Doesn't matter what they throw at you. It's still wrong. It's still wrong. You know, when I was codependent, I would get knocked in the face, but I would say it's no big deal. It didn't hurt. That's not the point. That's not the point. You shouldn't have anyone hitting you in the face. I walked out, but her character attacks on me and flaunting her amazingly quick new supply brought me to my knees. In short, she manipulated me into doing everything you shouldn't do. Thank you for that comment. I appreciate it. Blue Ridge Girl writes, hey, Dave, just wanted to say I'm so thankful for this channel. I feel like this channel is the best at educating about narcissists along with spreading the word of God. Your channel brought me back to God. I can never thank you enough for that. I still miss the narcissist terribly, but I trust God to heal me. My goal right now is just to not contact the narcissist. That's a good goal. If you 
go along with this very important goal by blocking the narcissist or gray rocking the narcissist, you're on your way to compartmentalizing the love you have for this empty meat suit. I tell myself it's natural to miss him, but as long as I just don't contact him, everything will be okay and I'll get over him one day. That is true. I'm so glad you shared the message for people who have been tricked by the devil slash narcissist. You are truly ahead of your time with this type of knowledge and the messages you shared. Thank you for that. It's learning and living. It's, it's the Holy Ghost telling you about the red flags to now will you listen to me after the discard? Because you ignored the red flags. Now the Holy Ghost is saying, will you come to me now? Because I have something better for you. A life that you can't even imagine. It's true, guys. That is the truth. Go after God. And his righteousness and everything else will be handed to you. Big tree comb writes, Dave, you're an absolute legend. Your understanding of how new supply circumstances dictate their behavior towards us is scary. Between you and Quinn, it's a lock. Quinn really helped me. He's a legend, I think, with his knowledge, and he's so deep. I, Richard Grant and uh, Quinn, they really helped me. I think those two are legends. Um, Kevin from Royal We, I liked. These three men are really good, guys. Narc Slayer, Dave, thank you for always making me laugh while still educating me. I'm so happy I'm healed. I still think of him every day because the betrayal is so awful. But I know how I can change the world like you since I have the Holy Spirit. Everyone needs to remember they can't play both sides. You get burned every time. Those Christians who want to go to the dark side to find their mate because it's cool. Um, it's exciting. Yeah, it, it is exciting. Then you need to see what the devil has for you in a relationship. Aren't you tired of seeing what the devil has for you in relationships? It's because you're not going to God for your mate. You're going to the dark side. A lot of people say, well, yeah, I, I met my, my narcissist in church. You didn't stick around long enough to, to discern by their fruit. You have to discern on their fruit. I don't care if you met them in church. Don't marry them until you see how they are with people. They're going to tell you who they are. Those are going to be the red flags or those are going to be the galvanizing that you need for marriage. But you got to be patient. If you meet them in church, be patient. You're going to see their true fruit. Master Chef writes, during the love bombing phase, I had this gut feeling that something was wrong when she started just talking only about herself and showing me over and over tons of her photos. Something was off as I had been around people like this before. You had to comment on her photos because supply is never enough. She needs you to comment on who she is on narcissists constantly. They're going to send you pictures of themselves all day and you're like, oh. And then you have to comment on their pictures. You're like, oh, sexy. Oh my gosh, don't send me another picture, please. I already fell in love with you. I don't need to see another picture of you. You, you know, relationships, healthy relationships, you don't need to send constant pictures of each other. You don't. I should have listened to that feeling because it inevitably became all about her. As soon as I tried to stand up for myself or set boundaries, it was turned around on me. She ended up using the same method of triangulation to end our relationship. I haven't spoken to her since May, though I have pain shopped since. Still, things are better, but I do know, but I do now find myself wondering if all those gut feelings I had that she was physically cheating on me were correct. You know that answer. You're going to get that answer, even without becoming a an FBI agent. Just know that your gut is probably true and move on. I know I was a bad Mrs. B and I had to know the truth, and I really didn't. In the end, I go, I really didn't need to turn over these rocks. I already had enough to say this person is uh, channeling 
demons. I had enough. But Mrs. B's want more, 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 more. And when you turn over those rocks, you're going to go, oh, my gosh, I feel like vomiting. You know, there's so many times I ran to the toilet going, I I shouldn't have turned over that rock because you're really going to know who they were. Heartless, unfaithful, empty meat suits. Mary writes, God bless you. May the Lord pour blessings and healings upon all of you. Thank you for this channel. Thank you for being here for all of us on this difficult journey of healing from trauma and from abuse. Mary, this is to all of this wonderful community, the subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. You would help the channel by doing so. Thank you guys for being here. And remember this, guys. This pain is only for a season. If you let it be only for a season, it doesn't have to take over your life. And if you go to God, he's going to expedite your healing. But you can't be one foot in and one foot out. You got to say, I'm going to see if this is true. I'm going to do what Dave did. I'm going to go all in with you, God. And he's going to, John 14, 21, he will manifest to you. And that's where the good chapter of your life starts. You guys be blessed. We'll see you tomorrow the next day. Be blessed, God. Be blessed.